Hi, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a complete finite element simulation using HyperMesh and Radios 2021 as the solver. So the first thing to do is just clicking OK here once I selected Radios. And uh, the first step in this model creation is to create the actual 3D part with the mesh. So I'll do that here by going to Geometry, clicking on Nodes, and I will create four nodes that will be the edges of the strip that I will want to simulate. So the first one is a zero, zero, create. You don't see where it is, so I'm going to resume the graph here. And there it is. The first one, the second one will be at, I'll put it at 20, zero, create. And that's right there. The third node I will be putting at 20, 10. And that's there. And then I'll, the last one here will be at 0, 10, create. These are the four corners of the part that I'm trying to create. I will also have a hole in the middle of the part. So that will, I need a node for that. This will be located at 10, 5. And uh, I think it should come any second. There it is. All right, good. So these are the nodes, the control nodes that we used to generate the part. The second step is to create lines between these nodes. So I'm going to click on lines. I'm going to click on this type of a multi-line. And I will then left click on the first node, left click on the second node, and middle mouse button click to connect them. Left button, left connect, left, left connect, left mouse button, left mouse button connect. These are the edges of the part that I created. I also want to have a hole in the middle. So I'm clicking on this radius here. I see C axis is the, uh, the normal axis. Radius of three sounds good. I select this node. And uh, there it goes. Create. So here is my uh, the boundary of the part I want to create. Looks good. I return. These are the lines. Now I'm going to create a surface based on these lines. So I'm going to click on surface. And I'm simply going to Select this icon here and select the different edges of the surface. So here they are, these, and then the edge of the hole, and create, return. I can zoom out or rotate this. See, this is a 2D surface that I have created now. And uh, looks pretty good. Uh, the next step is to create a finite element mesh on this surface. So uh, this is a 2D surface, I'm clicking on 2D. I'm going to auto-mesh this, so I'm clicking on auto-mesh. And uh, I will use an element size of 0 0.5, I want quad elements. And I select the surface and I mesh it. There it is. The mesh is good enough for my demonstration here, so I'm just going to keep that. And um, the step two in the model creation is to convert this 2D mesh into a 3D mesh. I'm going to drag the elements out and create 3D elements from these 2D elements. And I do that by going to Components, and I right-click on it, and I create a new component, and I'm going to call Specimen. There it is. And uh, I will then go to 3D. I go to Drag. I'm going to drag these elements, which elements I need to specify which I want to drag and drag all of them in the C axis, a distance of 0 0.5. And I want two elements in the drag direction. So I click OK. And I can return and then I turn on the shading to see this is what it look, look like now. So I created a 3D mesh from the 2D surface mesh that I had. And um, the next step is to remove the 2D mesh. We don't need the 2D elements. We're just going to use the 3D elements in this example. So I left click on this one. I right click on it. And I will delete it. And I say yes. And the next thing here is to go to geometry, temporary nodes, which are these yellow dots, the five of them we created. So I'm going to clear those. We don't need those anymore. And I'm going to save this file. And here it is. We now have two, um, I created a three-dimensional part that we will deform. The next thing I'll do is to create node sets for the left and the right sides. So to do that, I will right-click here. And I say Create Set. 
and my computer is trying to do it here it goes i'm going to change the card image to be node set okay i'm going to zoom in on the left side here and i'm going to click on which notes i want this set to contain so i said click on notes notes then i'm going to click on one of the notes in here and then I click on notes and I click all the notes. I want to select all the notes on that face that I have there. And there they are. Proceed. You can zoom out. And there's a little trick. If I go to this one and I press the Q key on the keyboard, it highlights that particular set just to make sure we got it right. I want to rename this one. So I click on the left there and then I go to set one and I call it left. I want to create a similar node set for the right. I control left mouse button to rotate. I control mouse wheel to zoom in. I go to left. I right click on the left and I duplicate it. I'm going to write, call this right. And I'm going to now select new nodes for this node set. So I left click on this. I say nodes. I click on the left arrow to delete the old selection. I click on one of the nodes in here notes by face proceed and then i can zoom out and here we have it now we have a left and the right node set the next step is to create boundary conditions on the left and the right sides so to create a boundary condition i will uh, do the following i go to view browser hypermesh solver and we'll wait there it goes. Now I'm in here. I can right click in here and create my boundary condition here. I select a BCS, which is boundary condition on the left. I call it. I have to specify what I want to do with these. I'm going to click on first the group. The set is left. So I'm selecting the left set. What do I want with these? Well, I want to restrict the movement of all degrees of freedom. Done. So that's good. And I'm going to move the right hand side here to the right. How do I do that? Well, I need to have a set. I have a set for it, but I need to also create a function that describes how much I want to move it at what speed. So the next step is actually to create a function. So I right click here, I create function, and the window popped up. It allows me to specify this functional form. I'm going to call it disp amplitude, displacement amplitude. At time zero, I want the displacement to be zero. At time 0 0.5, I want the displacement to be 0 0.5. And here's the, uh, just a linear uh, ramp, basically. I close that, and here's my function. Now, when I have my function defined, I can prescribe the displacement of the right side. So I'm going to right-click in here, create, uh, create boundary conditions, impose displacement. Here it is. And um, once my computer is ready, we can call this move right. And we have to specify what node set we want this to act on. It's the right node set. We have to specify what function we want to use. I use the displacement amplitude function that we just defined. Here we go. Now we have prescribed the displacement of the right and the left sides. The next step is to define the material. So I'm going to go back to model. I'm going to add the material by right clicking here, create material. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to call it LE for linear elastic. So here's our linear elastic material. I'll move this up a little bit. This is material ID1, linear elastic. We need to specify what the density is. So this is, I'm going to give it a density of 1000 E minus 12. And then once my computer wakes up, I'm going to make the Young's modulus to be uh, about 10. Poisson's ratio 0 0.4. This is a material definition here. I'm also going to create a, a more advanced material model that I call, um, it's going to be from the PolyUmod library. So I'm going to go to materials, right click, create. I'm going to call this poly umod bb. So I'm going to create a poly umod Bergstrom Boyce model. 
I select this one, and down here I'm going to change uh, this from be a, an elastic to a user material model, which you get by saying that unsupported. And then we need to specify our material parameters for this uh, material model. And I can do that as follows. I open up M calibration. I select uh, polyumod works from Boyce. I say OK. I then going to add some virtual test cases. It's three, six different strain rates. And then I'm going to run this. We'll see, this is the material model that I want. It's a strain rate dependent viscoelastic material model. I'm going to export this material model, clicking export to radios file, save. And I'm going to save it right here. And um, let's open the file we just created. And here is the file we just wrote from um, M calibration. The next step is to enter these parameters into HyperMesh. So I'm going to do it now. And that's all of the parameters that we need. I'm going to close this one. And that's, that's our material model. The next thing I want to do is set up a um, property. I'm going to create a property here. And here it is. I'm going to just change this to be a solid property. And uh, I want to use uh, element type 17. I want to use uh, Lagrange large strains. And I think that's all that I need to change here. And close this one. And here is our property again. We need to now assign the specimen the property we have defined. So here it is, property. Okay. And we need to assign a material to this uh, part. So which one do we pick? Well, let's use the polyumod Bergstrom Boyce model, the nonlinear viscoelastic material model. So I say okay. And here, here we are. Um, the, the next thing we want to do is to go to Tools, Engine File Assistant. So I'm going to create an engine file here. I'm going to specify uh, how long we want to simulate, say 0 0.05. We want to save outputs at 0. 0 0.02, and we want a time history output of 0 0.01. That seems reasonable. So I'll save that. I can move this down. And I think I didn't do it right. I wanted to do also generate the default here. So we'll do it again. Here we go. Then I'm going to run this simulation by just clicking on the radius button down here. And I'm going to overwrite any old calculations. And uh, I get another window popping up uh, here. And we can see from this window that the simulation is now running. OK, after a few minutes, the simulation has finished. And we can look at the results. So I'm just going to click on the results button of the window. And uh, this uh, 
opens up another window. So let's wait for the window to load. I'm going to move this window over to my screen. And here it is. So we will now plot the results here. So I'll click on the icon here to plot stress. I'm going to plot von Mises stress. I want to have simple averaging of the stresses. I click apply. I'm going to move to the last frame of the simulation. So here, and then I'll add the, the mesh to this. So this is what the results look like at the end. We'll see that we have the traditional stress concentrations at these locations around the hole. And we can use this software um, to plot whatever results we're interested in. So this is how you set up a simulation using HyperMesh and run it using radios. And I uh, hope you found this uh, video helpful. Thank you.